Hi, my name is Ron Slomsky. I work at Fort DuPont Ice Arena. I've been there for quite a while now. This is my wife, Hannah. She's from Slovakia. And one thing we love to do is make Hungarian goulash. This is a tradition that Hannah has grown up with as a little girl up in the Carpathian Mountains in hunting cottages. Um, and we'll tell you more about it as we go. But as you see right now, what we're doing is just beginning the um, the process and as you can probably hear in the background we have our Slovak folk music on. We always play our Slovak folk music while we make goulash. And I will just show you one more thing. One other thing we have here is the goulash pot and we like to look up at the mountains because it reminds Hana of home. So you can see what we're doing. This is an example of a big pot of goulash being made in one of the hunting cottages in Slovakia. Here are all of the hunters um, eating goulash. And we have another hunter who is making it. This is an example of the lower hunting cottage. This is in Eastern Slovakia in the Carpathian Mountains. From the high hunting cottage, you can actually see the high Tatras Mountains which border Slovakia and Poland, beautiful ski resorts on the High Tatras Mountains. Here is a dressed up picture of the hunters in Eastern Slovakia. My father-in-law is a hunter. That's where the goulash meat comes from. It's a, it's a deer pork uh, mix in Slovakia. We are using uh, beef, uh, stew, beef for stew here. And this is a wild boar. Now, Hana, her name is Hana, but she actually goes by Han Ka uh, because adding the K A is the nice way to say it. At work, her colleagues will call her Hana, but everybody else, family, friends will call her Han Ka. She has a cousin named Miroslav, he goes by Mirko. And Miroslava, his wife, goes by Mirka. So there's Mirko and Mirka. Another cousin is named Faro, and so he goes by Ferko. Her mom goes by Mamka, and her dad goes by Otso. That's the way to say father. Now here we have a few things you're gonna be seeing shortly. Some different ingredients, and then we have many in the house yet. And if I can just add, I will bet you all can smell this from where you are right now. The next ingredient is vegetables. So we have carrots, celery, and pepper. We have orange pepper. We're going to add all that to our pot. All the vegetables. And one more is the cut up tomato. Let's just cut up one whole tomato and add it to the pot. And we're gonna get this all soft, really soft to cook down. It's gonna take a while. You just have to make sure you have a good fire going on. It keeps cooking. And one more thing will be tomato paste. We're adding tomato paste just for more flavor. And we will get to the Hungarian paprika later. Hungar Hungary is noted. It's a staple. Hungarian paprika is a staple of Hungary. And we'll tell you a lot about that as we get to it. This recipe goes back hundreds of years, uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. Why? Because it is a simple 
recipe that doesn't cost a lot to make but has tremendous flavors. It's vegetables, it's beef, it's a little, uh, it, the bottom line is people have fun doing it too. Families sit together all day and make this. The longer it takes to make it, the better. Because the longer you let the flavors come out, the better. So if you see here, what we're doing here, we have a nice fire going on and it's been a couple hours and we've had, still have these vegetables, as you can see in here. And we're gonna keep going like this until these vegetables turn into a paste. Now keep in mind that Hungarian goulash is very different than American goulash. American goulash is made out of ground beef and, and noodles and things. This is more of a stew, like a, a, a beef stew which has flavors like you wouldn't believe and they, they come out because of the smoke in the wood and just just letting things do this all day long. Now Hana is from a very small little village in eastern Slovakia in the Carpathian Mountains called Krakota. Her grandmother, her aunt, uh, they live in Heltzmanoza, which is just two miles down the road. These villages have the most gorgeous mountains. They're peaceful, they're quiet, and they're actually so small that they have a loudspeaker system in them, so whenever they, uh, the, the leaders of the village want to make an announcement, for example, we have somebody from Poland up on the hill selling um, tomatoes or potatoes at 2 o'clock. Everybody knows to go up on the hill at 2 o'clock if they want fresh tomatoes or potatoes from Poland. Anything to add, Hanka? Home. Smells like home, huh? Smells like home. Sure does. Okay, as you can see, the vegetables are all cooked down and soft, and we're ready for another ingredient, which is the beef. So, this is a just little squares of beef cut up. We'll put all the beef in there. So we still have not added any water. All we have in there, onions, little bit of garlic, carrots, celery. What else, Hanka? Pepper. And now we're just adding meat. Now with meat adding, we're gonna add some spices. Salt, standard, standard salt. How do you say salt in Slovak? Salt. Salt. Pepper. How do you say pepper in Slovak? Pepper. And this is a special ingredient, Hungarian paprika. It comes all the way from Hungary. So we can visit home. Um, we either go to Hungary and buy it ourselves, or my parents always buy it for us. It's a special Hungarian paprika that makes it a really good flavor and it gives a good color to our gulash. Right over the Slovak-Hungarian border, which we drive through every time we go to Croatia, we've taken our girls at Manhattan to Croatia now three times, uh, three different summers. We drive through this. The first little town we drive through is called Mishkolc. And there they have a really nice shop with Hungarian paprika, a lot of traditional Hungarian sausages, Hungarian salamis and things like that. Well, we load up as much as we possibly can on Hungarian paprika because there's no replacement for it. Another interesting thing about Hungary in itself is if you, they say, if you dig a hole anywhere in Hungary, you're gonna find hot water. And they're right. The hot springs, the thermal baths in Budapest and elsewhere, as we've experienced, 
are amazing. They say the waters, well, they're thermal from underneath, but they're also therapeutic in a lot of ways. There are thermal baths in Budapest. The, the largest one in Europe is called Seicheni. We've taken the girls there. But in the neighboring towns, there are also many, many, many. Well, we cooked the meat down just for a couple minutes just to get it nice. Parsley, fresh parsley. You just put a whole string of fresh parsley in there to cook for about half an hour. It gives a good flavor, and then after about half an hour, you take it out of the pot. This is just for a good flavor. Do you want to take a minute, Han, and tell us a little bit about the beautiful castles that you have in Slovakia? things I wanted to show you just to share we have a nice Slovakia book and there's a couple of things I wanted to show you just some really interesting attractions which are fun to see and worth to visit so this picture we come closer on this side this is the picture of Košice which is the city in eastern Slovakia uh, this is the near your house theater yeah it's about 45 minutes from my parents house Wonderful. this is a theater and uh, in front of the theater is the water fountain which uh, the music plays and the water fountain moves up and down uh, following the music this is the theater where I had my graduation when I graduated from the technical university with my engineering degree it's a pretty city, that's why I spent many years of my studies. Okay, the next one I wanted to show you is Spish Castle. It's a very old castle, it's right on the top of the hill. It's again in Eastern Slovakia. It's about the same, about 45 minutes from our my parents' house. We visited it a couple times already with the girls. And close by to this castle it's a really good um, our favorite restaurants Piski Salash where you can just buy all this traditional Slovakian food like pierogi halushki you can order goulash in there you can order order some homemade sausages in there and it's it's really pretty there and we just love going there every time we visit Slovakia and there's one more attraction I wanted to show you where we went. This is a river called Dunayets. And this is a, you can take a, a raft, you can do a rafting on the wild waters of Dunayets. And it's a fun adventure. We have been on it one time when the girls were little babies. And as you can see, um, this river Dunajec is actually separating Slovakia and Poland. So on one side of the river is Slovakia, on the other side of the river is Poland. And this, this um, rafting on the wild water of Dunajec takes about two hours, the whole ride. Uh, it's an amazing ride, it's fun. You have to pick a good, good day with the good weather on it, which we had. So we had a, we had, um, a lot of fun. The guys who are um, kind of like captains on it, they tell you the whole history of how this was. Um. About an hour later, still at it. Yeah, I think we're ready for potatoes. 
last ingredient to add. And now the meat has been cooking for a while. So we're ready for potatoes. It's the last ingredient. The rule of thumb is that we normally use the same amount of potatoes as we use the meat. So it's an equal amount of meat and potatoes goes in. I'll let it cook for a while. These are our daughters, Emma. Emma is in fifth grade. Hannah is in second grade. They've been to Slovakia many times. The first time they went to travel there, they were nine months old each. They've been to Krakow a number of times. They've been to Budapest, to Hot Springs, Croatia. They love swimming in the clear, clear sea um, and looking up at the mountains. Uh, girls, they're great, great travelers and they love traveling and they love making goulash and there's two bees over there that are chasing each other <laughs> all right well i'll let you girls go then okay and here we are the last step we we're just gonna add um it's called vegeta it's another spice from slovakia it's a healthier version of salt mixed with some dry vegetables it gives very good flavor I add a couple spoons. I use it all the time in my kitchen. It's very flavorful. And the last one is Majoran. Majoran, Majoran. There's a song about Majoran. <laughs> there is the Majoran goes on the top. Hannah is my helper. <clears throat> and I'll mix it one more time. And the goulash is ready. Look at the beautiful color from Hungarian paprika and from all this cooking pretty much all day. It's an all day process. But the end result is amazing. Reminds me home. Cooking every time reminds me home. This is a beautiful beautiful Slovak folk song called Sinomoy and the boy is asking the girl's mom if he can marry her I could sing this for you but I won't <laughs> I, I sang this with Hannah's grandmother once and the last okay. step is I'm gonna take this hot, hot, very hot pot off the fire. Come here, honey. Hanna, how does it smell? Yeah. Amazing. Did you show them the fresh bread? Goulash is best with the fresh bread. Right out of the oven. And these are special goulash bowls which Hanka's parents brought from Slovakia. Very good for holding a hot, hot. Thank you very much.